Hey, Dr. Radcliffe here. We're going to be discussing interferential current. It's a common electrical stimulation used in physical therapy, chiropractic, and sports medicine. And before we get into uh, the whys, wheres, and hows, let's get into just the physics real quick. Um, we get the term interferential because uh, the currents interfere with each other. So, for example, interferential is a medium frequency current and pretend this is a pad here and a pad here, you will run the stimulation between these two pads. So you have another set of pads here and you'll run another simulation through these pads. Where they meet, they bump into each other, they interfere with each other and a lower frequency wave occurs and that's a very therapeutic frequency. So that's why we call it interference because the wavelengths interfere with each other. Okay. It was invented in 1950 by a guy named Dr. Nimiao. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, I think he was from Austria. And it became popular in the 1970s and is widely popular uh, today. So uh, that's why we call it interferential. Now let's discuss when you don't do interferential. We don't do interferential on pregnant people. Why? Because it might stimulate a muscular contraction. The uterus is a muscle. We don't want to cause premature labor. Um, any kind of bleeding disorder, either um, so people who have hemorrhagic disease um, or things like that, we do not do electrical stim on that. Um, active infections, like a big cellulitic leg or um, any kind of infection, we don't want to stimulate that. And lastly, we don't do it uh, on malignancy. And we use the acronym PHIM, P-H-I-M, to remember that. We also need to know where not to put this. And we like the acronym uh, see no hear evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. So we do put it on our eyes, see no evil. We don't do it transcranially, hear no evil. It could also be front to back, we wouldn't do that either, but you get the point. And uh, speak no evil, we don't put it, um, not necessarily on the mouth, you can do the jaw, but we don't put it on the front of the neck. Um, near the carotid situses. Okay, so our contraindications are FIM, pregnancy, hemorrhaging, infection, malignancy, and we don't do it um, over the eyes, transcranially, um, in, uh, near the carotid sinus. Also, you don't do a transthoracic, especially if there's a pacemaker. Okay, so we use the acronym see no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Um, why do we do this? So if a patient comes in and they have pain, we do it. Swelling, we do it. If we need to stimulate the muscle, so if the muscle's cramping or is a little bit swollen, we would do it. And lastly, uh, to break up spasm, we use the acronym PST to remember that. Okay? So, first acronym is FEM. Next acronym, why we do it, would be PST, P -S -S -S. And we don't do it over the eyes, transcranially, transthoracic, pacemaker, or um, near the carotid sinus. Okay, that is the whys, and this is the hows. Uh, let's get right into the actual unit itself. This is a um, LSI, interferential unit. Oh, first let's discuss frequencies. Um, can you get it? Is this shown up on the tape? Sort of, kind of. Um, we use different frequencies to stimulate different nerves. Nociceptors are the pain fibers. Those are stimulated um, typically between 80 and 120, actually between 90 and 150 hertz. Very often we use this. We use 90 to, 100, 90 to 150 or 80 to 120 if somebody has acute pain. Okay, so an acute pain setting works via the gate theory and also in Keflin production. Um, we use 80 to 120. That's the setting we most commonly use in our office. If we, wanna, if we have a chronic patient, um, we can produce an opiate response called an endorphin. We would want to use a 3 to 5 hertz. By the way, a hertz is something per second. So if I put a 3 to 5 hertz on you, 3 hertz may seem like I'm going to hit him, or I'll hit here. So 3 hertz might be something like 80 to 120 hertz is really fast. It would feel constant. Okay. 
So let's say you couldn't see anything, but you could feel it. You can count the number of times in a second. Um, you can't do that. Once it gets over like 10 or 15, you probably would lose count. So that would be for a chronic pain. It's an opiate response. This would be a gait response or a nociceptive reduction response and enkephalin production. You can also do a nerve block and um, muscle stimulation, but we won't go over that now. Okay, so when we would do this, by the way, um, let's take a look at these buttons real quick. So we talked about the pads here. Let's say this is a black pad, black pad, and this channel is going this way, and this is a red pad. This channel is going this way, and they interfere with each other, and then this beat frequency is occurring. That's the interferential current. This unit has the potential of uh, mimicking that inside the machine, so you can treat a broader area. And that's pre-modulation. So you're pre-modulating it and producing that. Okay. All right, so we would turn the machine on. Treatment time varies anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes. You can set that with this thing here. Always on stop. So, let's say somebody comes in with a very acute shoulder. Our setting would be 8 and 120. We would take the pads. Thank you. Let's just do a pre-modulated setting. Well, I'll show you both. Uh, why don't you flip over? Why don't you flip over on your okay. on your thing? Okay. So here's our black channel. All right. Uh, let's say he has a. Uh, let's just make something up. A strained lat. Okay. So this muscle right here on the right side. So I'm gonna lift this up. Let's actually do interferential first. So it's acute, meaning it just happened. By the way, acute means it just happened within the last couple of days. Subacute, usually within two to six weeks it has occurred. So it's starting to get a little bit better. And then chronic is typically anything over six weeks. Okay, so then we take this other pad. All right, so just the physics again. We have a current flowing this way. Let's say his, the epicenter of his pain is right through here. Current's flowing this way and then this way. So you'd want to put the treatment area in the middle. Okay. So we turn it on. In this case, we're not pre-modulating it. We have the pads crossed. Okay, it's acute. So we're doing that setting. We start the machine. All right, for pain production, it has to be, the patient has to be aware of it. So we really want to get the patient to the, to the point where they just feel it. So we're going to start going up until um, this guy says he can feel it. And we're going to go a little bit beyond that. Okay? Tell me when you feel it. Should be a very comfortable pins and needles. You starting to feel it? Okay, I'm just going to go up a little bit higher. That's still pretty comfortable. That's fine. That's actually a good setting there. It feels good? Okay, great. So we'll do that. Now, let's next talk about accommodation. After a while, he's going to get used to this. So we have a way for the, pit, for the treatment to last and be more effective for a longer duration of time. If I did this to you for 10 minutes or so, eventually you'd get tired of it. You'd kind of block the sensation. So we want to limit that. So we're going to sweep through various frequencies. See how it's getting going from an 80. It's also going to go all the way up to 120. And we're going to vector, I think this is a 20%, um, it goes down about 20% and then back up. See how it's getting harder and softer as well, the intensity of the stimulation. I think it's, since it's below 10, it's not going to vector very much, but we typically use that to get a uh, better outcome. Okay, so that's the interferential currents. Now, um, when you approach the machine or approach the patient, you don't want to just rip the pads off. You're going to shock the patient and you're going to um, sometimes shock yourself. You always make sure that you hit the stop button. Even if, I always just as a, uh, a habit, it'll beep in a second. I always just as a habit push the off, stop button again whenever I approach the machine. Even if I know it's off, I just make sure it's off. Not just that, but also um, also resets the timer to 10 minutes for the next person. Okay. Now let's do pre-mod. back on. These will be his pads. 
let's say Adam has a left-sided paraspinal um, injury. He's really sore over here. But you know, let, let's 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 knock that out. Let's say he's uh, he had an injury over on this side of his back. But let's say it's been about eight weeks, and it feels just a little stiff and achy. Um, it still is painful, but it's been about um, six to eight weeks. Okay, so we're going to put these on the tissue on this side. Okay, since we only have one set of pads, we're going to pre-modulate it in the machine. Okay, since it's been about six weeks, past six weeks, we're going to lower the um, lower it to a more chronic opiate. Um, six weeks of intense boring pain. We'll hit the set button and set that to ten minutes. And then we're going to, he has the black lead on it, and we're going to ask the patient uh, when you feel it. Tell me when you feel it. And, okay. We're going to go up just a tiny bit higher and tell me if it's still comfortable. Okay. Is that still comfortable? Good there. Okay. All right. And to improve our accommodation, we're going to sweep through some frequencies and vector through the milliamps. Okay. This will slowly tick down, down to one. And, um, and then it's going to beep and we know it's off. But um, again, if you ever approach a machine, you never want to take the pads off. When you first start out, um, when I first started doing this and as an intern, I can't tell you how many times I accidentally shocked myself and the patient. So we just don't want to do that. It's no fun. So always hit the stop button. Okay. All right. And that is interferential current. Those are the two most common settings we use in our office. Thanks.